Mitex blade saw is extremely versatile. Not only is it an efficient tool for cutting truss and wall panel members, but it also boasts the ability to perform other intricate operations. If your plant supplies stair components, the blade is the tool of choice. Cutting a set of stairs with the blade saw is simply a matter of selecting the function and supplying the required parameters. To begin, click the button labeled Key in Part. The blade software presents a number of predefined part shapes. Double click on the part shape for stairs. The Key in Stairs window opens. In the upper left portion of the window, the information entered in the inputs frame will configure our stair assembly. In our example, we will begin by entering a job number and description. These fields can be filled with any combination of alphanumeric characters. The stair stringer is the supporting member of a set of treads and risers as shown. In the next field, we'll tell the program how many stringers we want. In this example, we'll specify three. Risers are the vertical members that form each step as shown. Typically, the bottom riser will be shorter than the intermediate risers. This is because the bottom of the stair assembly is usually shortened vertically to allow for the thickness of the floor or a pad on which the stringers sit. The next field is bottom rise. We will assume that the thickness of the pad supporting the stringers is one inch, so we'll specify our bottom rise as six and a half inches. Our intermediate risers will be seven and a half inches. These dimensions are entered in foot inch sixteenths format. From our calculations, we determine that we have 13 intermediate risers, those lying above the bottom riser. Treads are the horizontal members that make up each step as indicated and are supported by the run element of the stringer. Again, from our calculations, we determine that the common run is 10 and a half inches. So, in our common run field, we'll enter that dimension. The next field is top run reduction. This is a horizontal reduction at the top tread location of the stringer, allowing for the thickness of a ledger or spacer. In this instance, we will allow for a three quarter inch spacer and enter that value in the top run reduction field. In the next several fields, we will specify our lumber material, its stock length, and its dimensions. If we now click the draw button, we get a graphic profile representing the stair stringer as it will be cut. Note that in the outputs frame at the lower left corner of the window, the top run or uppermost horizontal cut of the stringer is given. Also, the overall length of the stringer is given taken from the longest points on each end of the member. The software can store our most recent stringer quantity and dimensions if we hit the Save Inputs button. This gives us a starting point for later input. Click the Add to Cut List button to generate the parts. We can add additional members by once again clicking the Key in Part button and selecting the part shape for stairs. Since we used the Save Inputs function previously, the dimension and quantity fields retain their values from the last time we entered them. At the bottom of the Inputs frame, there's a smaller frame named Rise and Run Removal. Within that frame, there's a checkbox labeled Remove Rise and Run Cuts. Selecting this checkbox and supplying values for the fields in this frame allows us to create a cap, skirt, or a base rail for the stair assembly. It removes the individual stair step cuts and only creates end cuts for the cap. Let's assume that we want a quantity of two caps. We will supply a tread thickness value of three quarters of an inch. Note that if the tread thickness is set to a value greater than zero, the next field, width offset, must be given a value greater than zero as well. The specific value given to width offset must prevent the nose of the tread from protruding beyond the cap or base rail. Width offset is defined as a distance from the nose cut of the stringer to the upper edge of the cap perpendicular to its length. 
we'll set a value of 2 inches. The bottom offset field allows us to set a horizontal distance from the face of the bottom rise to the vertical end of the cap. We'll make this 3 inches. Clicking the draw button now displays a graphic of the cap member with its end cuts and the outline of the stringer superimposed on it. Once again, in the lower left corner of the window, in the outputs frame, the top run dimension and the overall length of the cap is shown. When all the field data has been supplied, the cap members can be generated by clicking the Add to Cut List button. In summary, with a few mouse clicks and by supplying a few parameters, the sometimes complex task of cutting stairs is greatly simplified on the blade saw.